Hey, here we are, finally. First uh, tying video on the new YouTube channel. I appreciate every one of you for subscribing and tuning in. Like I said, I hope this works out for everybody and uh, you garner some good information off of here. Uh, you're not going to see a lot of me in this respect. I don't particularly like to be on camera, um, but I think there's some value in it. I'll probably start each video off with a little bit of a talk, and if there's some something else that comes up that I think of that I might want to add, I'll put it at the end. So today we're going to start this off with, we're going to be tying a finesse jig. You heard that correctly. This is the AOD, or the Angel of Death is what that thing stands for. Kind of gathered that name from a Slayer tune, if you know what Slayer is, for some of you metalheads out there. Um... This is why I call it a finesse jig because it's not like some of the jigs that will tie and fish that are on one of these like, you know, eighth ounce ball jigs, super, super dense, lots of weight, going to drop like a rock in the water column. Pretty controversial fish with a fly rod, but you can do it. That's a whole other topic. I won't get into that. Um, these, on the other hand, um, these guys, they don't drop quite as bad, as quickly, as abruptly. That's all based upon how much weight and density you build into the front of these and I'm going to talk to you about how you can vary the weights a little bit. Um, you could go with something super huge with a giant cone which is going to change the profile. You know, larger tungsten cone up front. As you can see when I get into the video I'll talk about it. There's two cones built into this that are actually submerged inside the, the material of this fly. I'm going to show you a neat little way of how to use like some flexible resin to make this fly semi weedless. You'll kind of see, you probably can't see this it's zoomed out. Um, but I'll get into that as well. Talk about some of the colors, a lot of different colors we're going to tie these in. Um, and fishing these. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can fish these on a traditional um, fly rod setup. People like to use the controversial mono rigs. Um, I'll get into that topic at another time. Um, to be quite honest with you, I've done it. it it's highly effective. But I sit there and question myself every time I fish that way is, am I really fly fishing? Because now I've taken the fly rod and put mono on it instead of using a fly fly line. So I'll get into that at another point. Um, but for now, here's where we're at. I'm going to show you how to tie these today. And it should be a lot of fun. I'll tell you a little bit how to fish them as I'm tying it. And we'll go from there. Alright? So here we go. Alright, so... To start this off, I've got a number one Airx TP650 in the vise. This is a 26 degree bent streamer hook. Uh, you can use any kind of a jig hook for this particular fly if you'd like, but I really like this one. What you're going to see here in a moment is I've already kind of pre-wired one, but I'll show you how I kind of taper the wire on this. If you look at this one in the background, if it's in focus here, what you're going to see is that wire, when I push against these cones, though that wire has stopped abruptly before the bend so that those two cones can actually seat up against it because when I finish this fly my tying thread is going to be right up there behind the eye. First things first I'm going to use some 25 thousandths lead free wire you can use lead wire it all depends on how much you want it to sink I actually weigh these with a gram scale I have an electronic one um, it's not so much the weight you could have something that's equally as heavy as this 1 8 ounce ball jig but you have to remember that there's a heavier amount of, it's much more dense this is going to sink faster so even if you've got the same amount of grain, grams in weight as one of these it may not sink as fast keep that in mind so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some brushable super glue just put a nice little thin layer near the back because this is going to work forward as I take my 25 thousandths lead wire so I start my wire right about short of where I think I'm going to end it. And I'm just going to wrap this. You can kind of see I'm using a bobbin for this. Reason being, you're going to waste less. Break it off. And now you see what I've done is now I've got a nice little spot there which is going to push my two cones further back. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some flat pliers. I'm just going to flatten this out and the further away from the wrapped wire I go the more pressure I put on it so you can kind of see it flattens it out more. And I actually wasted a little bit of lead here usually you can do it with less. And then boom I wrap that back. Now that's giving me a nice little under taper on there. Now I'm going to take my UTC 
140, my Vivas, Danville, whatever thread you want, all of them work fine. This is Vivas. This works relatively well. And I'm just going to kind of start somewhere up here over that lead free wire and just work my way back to a point where the barbed hook is and continue to work my way back. When I do that, what ends up happening is I've kind of slowly covered up some of that and you don't need to necessarily cover up all the lead wire because you're going to cover it with some of our tail material. Our tail material is also going to be the same thing we use for the collar on this. I know you guys are all familiar with laser dub but this is something that's a little bit larger. This is a uh, magnum dub. Aaron Laterra from American Tide Flies manufactures and sells this stuff. And like I said before, less is more. We just want to take half of what we think we're going to need. You can see this is much longer. It's got some flash built into it. This is a ginger collar because we're going to tie this in like a ginger, which is one of my favorite. Take one turn somewhere a little bit past the halfway point. Two turns three, kind of up on that little bit of the pyramid tail that we built, and then fold it rearward. And then we're just going to kind of, as you can see here, coat that rear lead wrap with our thread. Now you can take your brush, and you'll see I got two of these, talk about it in a moment. I'm just going to kind of brush some of that out. So I want a nice little wispy tail, you see here. Next thing we're going to do now you can put that dubbing aside because you're going to use it again. We're going to take an EP sparkle brush. You know I like these. I used to make brushes before these things came out. But these have kind of made it a lot easier. You can definitely use any kind of flash you want. Or if you'd like you can use some sort of polar chenille, reflector flash, whatever. It doesn't really matter. We're going to tie that brush in. And this color I'm using is a speckled gold. And you'll see I didn't start it right back there up against the base of the tail I took basically what was essentially one turn forward and I'm gonna wrap my thread forward and I'm gonna stop it a couple turns behind that first cone that red cone then all I'm gonna do is just start wrapping it open turns as you see here about an eighth of an inch about five or six turns there take two or three turns over the back of it one in front and then trim it off. Hopefully you got some bad scissors in there. Before I go any further, I'm going to take my brush again, brush some of that out. And then just build a nice little thread base over that bad boy. So you can kind of see everything's moving rearward. Alright. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to take a crafter brush. EP crafter brush. Something that's relatively close in color to that. And we're going to tie that in. Because we're going to do about two or three turns of this right behind that very first cone that we've come to. So same thing. Take that bare wire, push it right up into that cone, and just wrap your thread over it. Once you've done that, you're going to see what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take that brush and I've pulled the fibers all in one direction. Just like you're wrapping a hackle. Same thing. A couple of turns, maybe three. Take your brush in here while you have it, comb that out, take the fiber, split it apart, run your thread right over it once, twice, three times, once, twice, three times, go in, clip it at the wire. All right. Do a couple more wraps right over that. I would brush it out again, okay, and then we're going to whip finish it, just like so. And then we're going to reattach our thread. So essentially you've got yourself a nice little cone pattern here, but we're going to bury these cones inside of this particular fly. All right. And that's where we're at right now. You've kind of already seen it built a nice little taper, good little bit of flash in there. And then we're going to go from there. All right. Now what we're going to do after we've whipped finish and come off, we're going to take our finger and move that cone backwards while simultaneously reattaching our thread. All right, because you've got a 26 degree downturned streamer hook here with a jig, I always recommend you put a half hitch on there before you do anything. Otherwise, you're going to let that unravel on you. So the collar on this is real simple. It's just two bundles of that same dubbing material. This is what I would consider like a guide fly. It's pretty quick 
if I wasn't talking, you could hammer out three of these already. So I take half of what I need, one bundle, and then I'm going to take the other one, just kind of pull this stuff apart, just like you see here, right? Half of what I need. Okay. Then you're going to take the two of them together, just like so, place them on either side of that. You're going to grab them with your two fingers like this and place them on either side of that first cone. And then you're just going to basically take your thread, spin it to the right, and then just take one loose wrap over, and then a second loose wrap over, and then pull it tight and do a couple more turns. But make sure when you do those turns, you try and seat that thread right up against the front of that cone. Okay? When you get to the point just above it here, like I am, what we're going to do next is, and this is where it can get kind of tricky, you might have to move it around and see where all that fiber went, find an opening. So I had to kind of go to invert the hook and the vise here a little bit. Stand by. Once you find an opening in that material, which I have here, then you can kind of basically cart it back rearward. Brush it back just like you see here, and then advance your thread in front without trapping it. So sometimes you'll see you're going to have a little bit of a shallower spot of dubbing here on the bottom, which is fine, because you're going to basically brush this stuff out in a second, and it's just going to spread it around. Or you can take your fingers like I am here and just kind of pinch and work that material around. Pull it rearward, and then we're just going to make a nice, neat thread head right here. And then you can whip finish that off just like you see here. Before you do anything, I'm going to put some resin on there. I'm going to put a little Solaris bone, bone Dry, which is a really thin stuff, just over the thread wraps for now. Cure it with a torch. Once you've done that, then you're going to take your brush and you're just going to kind of brush this stuff out. Okay, and that's going to basically cover and spread out that material through the entirety of that fly pattern. If you got some that caught that hook point, no worries. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some eyes on this. You know how I like eyes on a lot of these. I'm using some 5 16 oval pupil 3D eyes. These guys right here. Whichever size you choose is on you. First thing I'm going to do though is I'm just going to put a little drop. And we're going to basically put these, the leading edge is going to be right up against where the thread is. And it's going to basically have a triangular taper that's going to come out because of that cone that's on there. Alright? So, take your first one. And you want to do your eyes when you ha don't have a lot of fibers and stuff flying around or else they're inevitably going to get caught. So you take your, your gel, Loctite, and just put a drop in there, close to where you're going to put this eye on. Like I said, your leading edge is going to be right there at the base of where the thread is, just like so. Just gently touch it on there for now. We're going to seat these things in a second. You can use some different types of glue on this. I found this this gel Loctite works good because you have a cone behind it. It kind of seats right to it. Same thing. I'm going to put another little drop on this guy. Just like we have here. Less is more. Leading edge is going to go right up against where the thread starts. Which you'll kind of see here. And then you're going to take your fingers and just put them right at the front of the cone, kind of touching where the eye of the hook is, and that's going to give you that nice little cone shape that we're looking for here. And then just hold them in place for a few seconds to kind of seat it. Now, you heard me talking about using two brushes here, so the cool thing with this is we're going to use a technique on this with some flexible resin that's going to essentially make this fly. For some of you bass guys, you can make this relatively weedless. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that flexible resin and kind of comb it into this material. So we're going to use some flexible Solaris. Downside to this stuff though, and I found with most of the flexible resins, they don't completely cure. 
So if it is kind of sticky, you might want to put something over it. You could um, instead use liquid fusion, but I will tell you that it's going to take a lot longer to cure. So that's why we're going to use this today. So we're going to start on the top, which is actually the underside of the hook, because this is going to ride inverted. And we're going to put a thin layer right up in the front, a relatively good size layer of, of flexible resin right here. And then we're going to take our other brush. I have two. You'll see this one's got some red on it. This is the one I use for brushing this stuff. We're just going to brush it into that material, just like you see here. And that's going to give us a little bit of stuff to work with. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Put some on the bottom. Just like so. Take that same brush we just used. Quick, brush it right in there, just like you see. All right. Can take a little bit as well. Because you got some on the brush now. And just brush it into those fibers right by the eye of the hook or the eye of the fly so what I've essentially done is just brush this stuff right in there now it's brushed into the material so as long as I don't hit it with a torch it's not gonna cure up yet so if you want to change the profile of this fly you can grab it by the tail as you see what I'm doing here and I can kinda of manipulate as to how I want it once I've done that now I'm gonna take my two torches this makes it easier and I can kind of cure this it's almost turned it into almost some sort of like a bass tube and you can kind of see here this stuff is relatively flexible now if you really want to make this more weedless then my suggestion is you can take this and pull it so that it's over the point of the hook because what ends up happening this stuff kind of springs back see as I let go it goes right back to shape so you can make this fly relatively weedless if you'd like. What I will tell you I will do now is because I don't really like the way that this flexible resin kind of holds up over those solid eyes. Now I'm going to take some thin or some bone dry. Just put a nice little coating right over each eye as I do here. It's going to kind of clean up the presentation of it a bit. If you got any errant fibers in there, just pop them out. Take a look at it. Invert it, boom, hit it with your torch. So now you've essentially made this nice little fly that's got a little bit of flexibility to it too. So it's going to actually help you run that thing right through some weeds and whatnot. And that's it. That's the AOD, Angel of Death. Like I said, I like to fish this a multitude of different ways. It is what I would consider a finesse jig. It's moderately weighted. It's not a ton of weight in there, but just enough to get it to come down. The color schemes on these are kind of endless. If you want, you can go olive like you see here, go black, yellow, white, whatever color scheme you like. And that's kind of what it looks like outside the, the vise right there. Pretty easy pattern. Fun to fish. Catches a lot of trout. Um, you can even use it as an anchor in a Euro rig for some of you Euro guys out there. That's it. Hope you liked the first video. If you got any questions, you can drop them in the comments. I'll gladly answer them as quickly as possible. I appreciate your time and thanks for coming out.